And just so we're on the same page to start off, is there a way of describing consciousness that you found is acceptable to most parties? Granted, though, that we aren't yet explaining what it really is or what causes it or anything like that. The standard way it's defined in philosophy and science that most people seem to be okay with, although although not everyone, is just to say consciousness is subjective experience, seeing color, hearing sound, feeling pain. Your consciousness, to put it in the way Thomas Nagel famously did in his paper, What's It Like to Be a Bat from the 1970s, your consciousness is what it's like to be you. Right, So right now you're having ex- visual experience of the room around you, hearing the sound of my voice, feeling the clothes on your body if you pay attention. This is all part of what it's like to be you right now, all part of your subjective experience. I mean, in a way, I haven't really defined it as such, at least I haven't defined it in other terms. I think it's something of a kind of primitive concept but it seems to be one that people quite easily get onto. You know, I mean, teaching philosophy for many years now, there are many philosophical concepts that students struggle to get a handle on and what the hell are you, what the hell are you talking about? But with consciousness defined as subjective experience, you just give a few examples and people seem to get onto it quite quickly um, on both sides of the debate, really. Um, so not everyone's happy with that. Some people think, is there really a single unified concept here? But I'd say most people are happy to start with that and then run with it. Mm -hmm. So in very early on in our conversation, you said that it is so hard to deny the reality of consciousness, unlike something like free will. Uh, But then you just said that consciousness is subjective experience, hearing sound, feeling pain and so on, and that this isn't agreeable to everyone. And another guest I've had on the show, well, too, I, I've spoken to Dan Dennett a couple of times, but I have in mind uh, your friend and co-host of Mind Chat, Keith Frankish, who I had on the, the show uh, a year or so ago. And they are uh, illusionists about consciousness, as you know. And I'm wondering if this is one group of philosophers who would not find this description of consciousness agreeable yeah it gets tricky doesn't it because um both den i mean denna early in his career seemed to be much closer to saying consciousness just doesn't exist but these days they would both say oh yeah consciousness exists it just depends what we mean by consciousness i mean the way to pin it down i think is to say insofar as keith or dennett believe in quote unquote consciousness, it's something that's purely behaviorally defined. Now, to be clear, I don't just mean external behavior. I mean, also the behavior of parts inside your brain and so on, uh, that cognitive science or neuroscience might reveal. But nonetheless, it's just defined in totally third personal terms, ultimately, in terms of um, inner or outer behavior. Um, and so to my mind, I guess, and I think, I think most people, my views are controversial, but I don't think this is controversial, what I'm about to say to my mind, when I talk about the feelings and experiences of others, that is just not what I mean. I'm not making a claim that could be cashed out in purely behavioral terms. If I say, you know, my wife's in pain. That's not a claim about her behavior, either her external behavior or the behavior of her parts. That's that's not that's not what I'm trying to say. It's about how she feels, and that's a very different kind of a claim, at least at the level of semantic meaning. Um, so, so mo- I mean, that, so as I say, most physicalists are also on board with what, with what I've just said in terms of what we mean when we talk about subjective experience. Most physicalists, are, you know, agree with me with that starting point. They will then argue that, you know, we discover or we can explicate consciousness in physical terms. But nonetheless, that's not what we mean. That's not, that's not the, uh, what we mean in the first instance when we talk about consciousness. So, yeah, so, so the Keith Dennett position, I mean, people might not always get this idea because I suppose Dennett is... Um, 
quite a big figure in in the mainstream and not many philosophers are but i think dennett's type of physicalism and keith's physicalism is is a fairly radical position doesn't mean it's wrong of course and um you know i have a fairly radical position myself but yeah in in so far as i suppose in in a sense they are denying the phenomenon if if by the phenomenon we mean something which is not defined in terms of third person behavior if that's what we mean by consciousness then they're denying the phenomenon and of course that's an option right you know i i i i um i like to consider all kinds of weird and wacky views i have one myself so so i take that view very seriously but i think for most people um they they are not only on on board with that that they have this idea of what philosophers can sometimes call phenomenal consciousness, subjective experience, but they're pretty damn sure it exists. And that's the starting point for most people on both sides of the debate. 